Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at this 30 gallon fuel caddy from Vivor. They sent it out to me recently. This is not going to be a long term review like I, I typically try to make my reviews more long term. Um, I think it's a pretty simple little uh, setup here. I don't think that durability is really going to be a concern outside of maybe this pump. And I'm going to talk about that pump as we get into the video and my thoughts on it. We'll cover uh, packaging quality, assembly, and then just all the different parts, components, and features of the fuel caddy that you may want to know. And I'll just kind of talk through some of my thoughts on uh, the different aspects of this uh, little piece of equipment here. So first let's cover shipping and uh, packaging quality. So this box did come absolutely thrashed on my doorstep. The shipping company tore the box up. It, it's a little bit heavier of an item and a little bit bulky of a box, obviously given its size. And uh, I think they just really beat the thing up. And so I wound up with these two little dents here that you can see, uh, one decent little dent there and a little paint chip with a small dent below it. But as far as I can tell, that is the only shipping damage. And me personally, I would rather it not be there, but I'm fine with it. Not a big deal at the end of the day. It's still going to do the job just fine. Let's talk about assembly real quick. You have to put the casters and the wheels on the bottom and you have to install the fuel gauge, the pump, and I believe the handles on the back. It probably took maybe 20 minutes in total was fairly easy to do. The only thing that I had a problem with with assembly is the you'll see the little grain wire here and we'll talk about it in a little bit but they include included this grounding uh, wire so that uh, we can prevent sparks while fueling up and, and using the piece of equipment and uh there the were the instructions were very unclear on where exactly that thing was supposed to be attached so i just found a spot and i i think it's going to work I used it, I, I pumped fuel through it, gasoline. It didn't uh, start any fires, so I think it's okay. Um, I'm not suggesting that this is the placement that you, where you place this wire, but they, they, they need to be a little bit more clear about where, where you should be placing this wire in the instructions. Other than that, assembly is fairly easy. Took just some basic tools, and like I said, about 20, maybe 30 minutes. Let's quickly run over some of the specs. There's not a lot to talk about here. Um, but we'll just run through it real quick. It is a 30 gallon fuel caddy, so its capacity is 30 gallons. I put about roughly 10 into there, I believe. Um, it holds oil, diesel, gasoline, and other uh, fluids that you would need for engine driven items. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna try and create a, a comprehensive list because I don't remember everything that they list that can be used for. For me, I was interested in having this thing for gasoline and that's all I've used it for and that's all I'm going to use it for. The pump itself is a 180 watt 12 volt DC pump. It runs off of a 12 volt battery obviously. It'll pump at 6.2 gallons per minute and I definitely believe that. It's very quick, puts out a lot of fuel very quickly. Um, but not too much that it's unmanageable, right? So it's, it's a pretty just good he uh, hefty little flow. The idea here is probably to attach this thing to the battery of whatever vehicle you're wanting to add fluids to and uh, hook it up to the battery and then put those fluids in, into the vehicle or piece of equipment. We're just gonna start at the bottom and move our way to the top. Talking about the quality of things and my opinion on the components of this uh, fuel caddy. First thing is you have ball bearing large wheels that are like hand truck wheels. They work well over dirt and gravel. Uh, that's pretty much all I have around me is dirt and gravel and it rolls over it just fine. It's just like a hand truck. You have a handle up here at the top. You tip it back on these larger wheels and it works just fine rolling, rolling around in the dirt. Um, also you have these casters in the front. Surprisingly, those actually do a decent job of rolling around in the dirt though I would be very careful. Um, I would also add that it is one of the smoothest rolling uh, pieces of equipment I've had. I think they have some pretty high quality casters on them. Uh, rolls around really nice and easily and smoothly, um, probably due to, like I said, decent casters and ball bearing uh, wheels back here in the back. They just attach with a bolt that you can see right here and they thread right through that little piece welded on to the side here. So there's not a lot in between the bottom here and the top, but I will just talk about the uh, fuel storage tank itself. I am not a welder, but I do weld and I uh, work with steel a lot. And I think just based on feel and what I hear, 
This is probably a 14-ish or 16-ish gauge uh, sheet metal steel that this thing is constructed out of. Looks like it's folded on all the corners and then uh, welded with a cap on the top. As far as I can tell, that weld is totally sealed. I've not had any leakage issues. So um, as far as like the actual construction of it though, no leaks at the top or the bottom. It's been sitting here in the shop and it's still uh, fairly full of gasoline despite the probably gallon or so that I put into my tractor. Um, let's talk about the paint real quick. The paint is holding up fine. Uh, you probably can see the little lines of fuel that have been spilled on the side of it. I'm guessing it's just a powder coat, but it seems to be holding up to that fuel just fine. I try to keep my tools and equipment inside, so um, I wouldn't be too surprised if this faded a little bit in the sun, but it's it's been kept inside for me, and I, I don't think I'm gonna have fading issues. They have a few stickers and warning labels on here, as well as a little bit of branding. One thing I appreciate about their branding is it's not big and flashy. They let you know who, uh, sold the piece of equipment whether they manufactured it or not i don't know it is made in china though by the way if you were curious it tells us right there on that tag made in china but it's again it tells us where this thing comes from vivor but it's not uh too flashy it's very nice and simple and i do appreciate that about it all right up here on top with all the components on top we'll start here with this fluid level gauge uh, this appears to be plastic. Yeah, it flexes like plastic, fills and sounds like plastic. There's a little red rod that goes down in there that is sitting on a float that will um, go up and down with the fluid level. Uh, not the easiest thing to read, um, but you probably will be able to keep a pretty good idea of how much fuel or fluid is actually in this thing um, without even having to look at that thing. So. I've got a pretty good idea. You'll be able to fill from the weight. You can even look down inside if you really need to and uh, get a pretty good estimate of how full it is. With that being said, it is nice that they do include this little gauge and it seems like it works okay. So let's talk about the pump here. Here's your on off switch. Uh, metal housing around here looks like some kind of cast steel or aluminum or sorry, cast iron or aluminum uh, material over here. Like I said, the power switch and then the cord comes out the bottom. We'll talk about the cords in just a little bit. Uh, brass fitting here on the bottom that threads onto this pipe nipple that is welded to the cap on the fuel caddy. And then a nice brass fitting up here on the top to hook this hose to that is just sealed off by a hose clamp. They also include some Teflon tape that is rated for fuel and oils. Uh, so don't just go using your regular uh, plumbing Teflon tape, they include uh, some Teflon tape here that's supposed to uh, seal up with the uh, chemicals that are potentially going to be inside of this unit. Uh, again, brass fittings and uh, everything seems to go together pretty well. Kind of shift this stuff out of the way. Next thing is the fuel cap. It's a thin piece of plastic. Wouldn't mind seeing like a steel fuel cap, but of course they're just trying to keep costs down. Down inside of here you have a little screen that, uh, if I could pull it out, the filters out uh, particles that could be in the fuel and it goes down into the tank. The tank seems to be in good shape uh, from what I could see shining a light down there uh, when I first got it and was assembling it. We'll talk about the hose real quick. Uh, the hose itself I think is pretty decent quality. I like that it's clear. You can see that the fluid's coming. Of course you should be able to kind of hear that within the pump itself too. They have this uh, aluminum like crimped aluminum spout here on the end. For some reason, I want something more there, like a like a real handle, like a real like a real fuel station handle. Though I don't think that's necessary at all. It definitely works better than just having uh, you know blank end of the hose here. But like I said, it works. I'm just being picky, wishing I had something else. It's crimped on there pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues. The hose itself, I think, is a decent quality component of this uh, little unit here. Last thing is these cords. So you have alligator clips. They're either copper coated or they are entirely copper. I'm not sure which it is. Uh, have pretty sturdy strings on them. Seem like decent quality little alligator clips. However, the cord here is only about four feet long. So if they're expecting you to hook this up, let's say, you know, you're primarily going to be filling up a, fueling up a pickup truck with this. If you're hooking this up to the battery in the front underneath the hood, the hose is maybe six-ish feet long and that might be pushing it, maybe five or six feet. It's a little longer than the wires here for powering the pump. 
if that's what they're expecting you to do, they need to include a much longer wire system here. And, and maybe they could even include a way to store the wires so that it's not kind of a mess like this. Uh, maybe like weld on a couple small little hooks. You can wrap them around somewhere on the side of the uh, storage tank. So on the pump itself though, while we're talking about it, me personally, I really wish that I got a manual pump version. They sent me this 12 volt DC pump version. I'm going to find a manual pump and put it on here. That's why I say a long-term review is gonna be irrelevant to this thing because I'm just gonna pull this thing off of here and not use it. Um, it's no fault of the pump itself. Like I said, it's a personal preference thing here. The pump pumps fine, it works fine. But what I need is something that is really convenient to use and a manual hand crank pump is would be my preference. I was excited about the, the DC a 12 volt pump, but when I actually got it here, I was like, man, I kind of actually wish I had a manual pump. I just think it would be way more convenient. I don't have to hook it up to the battery to get the fuel out. So definitely consider maybe picking this up with the manual pump from Vivor. They do sell uh, several different versions of this thing. This is the electric pump version. Again, you can get it with a manual pump. Really though, that should sum up the review of this thing. Um, like I said, not so long term. Uh, but I don't really know that this is the kind of uh, piece of equipment where a longer term uh, review is really even going to be necessary anyway. Uh, my, my primary plan for this thing is to use it here uh, on my little homestead to keep things fueled up. I want to get it filled up with ethanol free fuel from a gas station that's about an hour away from me that sells ethanol free fuel. Just so that I always have it here for everything that I run. I have so many different small engines. Uh, generators, chainsaws, uh, my four cylinder, obviously tractor, uh, all, all the little engines I have around here, which there's plenty of them, pressure washer, I could go on and on. I like running ethanol free fuel through them and this is probably gonna be the easiest, cheapest way to run ethanol free fuel through them. So that's gonna be the primary purpose of this thing. Like I said, it does all kinds of different fluids. For me, it's gonna, it's gonna do ethanol, it's gonna run ethanol free fuel through it. So pretty good little piece of equipment I'm happy to have here in the shop. Uh, no real complaints about it. So thanks everybody for watching. Make sure you go down and use the links if you do plan on picking this thing up. Uh, there'll be a couple of links down there with a, I believe, 5% discount code. Um, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what they said they were doing for you guys, uh, but there will be a discount code down there if you do choose to pick this thing up. I don't know that I get any kickbacks from it unless you use the Amazon link, which I think I'm going to include an Amazon link as well if this thing is on Amazon. So again, thanks everybody for watching. If you're not subscribed, make sure you click subscribe, hit the thumbs up button if you like the video, and we'll see you in the next one.